Hi. Hi. Um, Mark, uh, just a um, quick question. I, I wanted to know your opinion on the, the corporate straw man theory um, and that laws only apply to this fictitious character in our name registered with the government and they don't apply to human beings. I do not believe that laws, which are just scribbles on paper, apply to anyone. And the foundation, see, any, anything that's based on a foundation that the government can be legitimate or that there are citizens and states is faulty. As, as, uh, it, it, just, it, it just falls on its face. It, it's, and it's also, demo I mean, there's so many ways to go about showing it's not true. Uh, I don't think that they got together and said, "Hey, you know, what we're gonna do, we're gonna, uh, uh, we can trick these people into the, the, the people who believe that we here work for them. We can trick them into paying us by putting their name in all caps. It, it make it has no merit, I think, whatsoever. Uh, they're a violent group of men and women providing a service. Uh, you pay or get shot, and whether your name is in all caps doesn't change anything. Well, there's this guy up in Canada. His name is Robert Robert Menard. Um, and he he was um, he bought into that theory or he believed it, and he started um, reading all of the laws in all of the Commonwealth countries, so like um, Britain, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, and he found that they're all basically the same structure exactly, except a few words changed here and there. And what he found was that in in the Criminal Code of Canada. Um, Sections 126 and 127 basically say you can disobey any law of Canada if you have a lawful excuse. So then he compared this to other statutes over the Commonwealth, and he found that um, the word lawful excuse is actually, in, in other countries, is a claim of right. So what he did was well, he sent a notice of understanding... You got to make it quick. We got a minute, about a minute oh, and a half sorry. left. He sent a notice of understanding and a claim of right to to the heads of government in their private capacity, basically saying, "I understand that all of these words written on all of these laws don't apply to me, um, and I claim the right to um, not be governed." And that, and since then, what he's found that. I found that when he gets stopped by police or anything like that, what shows up on the, in the computer is um, no statutory charges without the express written consent of the Attorney General of Canada. Well, that's something I have to see some evidence for. It, it, it's on its face. It sounds highly unlikely and goes against the very nature of government. And I tend to believe that things act uh, have to act according to their their, their nature. Uh, but I do appreciate the call. I have to, you have to have to email me off there and, and let me get me you know, so I can get more information on that. But I do appreciate the call, Tim. Tim in Montreal. Sure, thank you. We're at, all right. This is the end of the first hour here of the New No Stay Project here on the Be the People Radio Network. We'll be back in just a few moments. If you want to join us, you can call in at 888-202-1984 or use 512-646-1984 if you live in the Austin, Texas area. I've uh, got a couple of the callers. I just want you to be patient. We'll get to you right after this break. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right. Welcome back to the No State Project. This is the second hour of the January 26, 2008 show. Back with my guest, Stefan Molyneux of FreeDomainRadio.com. Welcome back, Stefan. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Glad to have you back. I want to go right back to the calls. And one of the things, before I bring it up, you know, one of the things, you know, you hear things like this all the time. And I just want to just throw this out because I've been on... I've been on a few tracks. I've had a few times where I would stop by, uh, you know, a cop. And some of them, you know, I was able to drive away, no problem. And, and not, not all of them, but a few not. Uh, I just, uh, I, I don't know. I have a, you know, I'm a skeptic by nature. And the, the idea that it comes up on the computer uh, that no statutory charges unless it, it's in writing. I mean, would the cop go to the car and tell this guy? It came up on my computer, sir, that uh, I said. I just, I, I, I'm doubting that. I'm a skeptic. 
I just have a hard time believing that the cop is going to just go to the car and tell him, by the way, my computer says that, unless I can't charge you with a statutory violation unless you give it to you know, me permission in writing to do so. I, it just uh, doesn't sound too likely. But, yeah, yeah I, I must say I, I call um, I call urban myth on that one for sure. Yeah, uh, I, I'd have to see some evidence of that, and so it, it just uh, I, it and, and if there is evidence, uh, I'm all over it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that I might leave from a step step <laughs> stand, and I'm good to go. Uh, absolutely, I'd, I'd you know I'd, I'd I'd probably be thinking of moving to Canada myself. Well, I, we have uh, Colleen in Ohio. Colleen, welcome to the No Stay Project. Hi. Um, I had a question particularly for Stefan. I was interested in hearing your theory about how uh, we as individuals can go about eliminating the state uh, right now. Well, thanks. It's an excellent question. I'm just, I'm completely baffled. Is that a woman on the line? Yes. Well, yep. Yeah. Shocking. It's a female <laughs> listener. My God. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, um... Uh, just, just very briefly, my approach is, uh, to me, clearly it's a multi-generational project. And one of the things that libertarianism, as, as um, setting its goal to reduce or eliminate the state, has failed, is that it always goes for short-term measures. Let's vote, let's run a candidate, let's you know, do this, that, and the other. And it really has achieved every bad thing on the planet as far as it's got relative to its goals, right? Something like 150 years classical liber uh, liberalism and libertarianism has been trying to reduce the size of the state largely through education and political action. And uh, I don't think that it's worked. In fact, empirically, it completely has done the opposite of working. So my approach uh, is to take the principles that we know would work in a free society, uh, no unchosen positive obligations, voluntarism, and uh, um, you know a staunch sort of commitment to integrity and virtue and, and self-esteem and philosophy and so on. But you don't have to wait for Ron Paul to set you free, which is never going to happen anyway, and you don't have to wait for the government to lower taxes, which is never going to happen anyway, at least not uh, in any way that we can control. But um, what you have to do is take the basic principles of libertarianism and apply them to your own life and realize that in your own life there is no positive obligations that you are bound to other than contracts that you sign up for yourself and so on and what that means is that you are not bound or obligated to spend time with anybody uh, if you don't like your parents well you can sit down and talk with them but then if you can't work it out there's no positive obligations to spend time with your parents uh, or your siblings or friends that you've had who maybe don't uh, see eye, you don't see eye to eye with anymore in, in, in terms of philosophy or ethics. So you can do an enormous amount to bring around a non-obligatory society called you or you a or <laughs> I called it utopia, like Y O utopia, and uh, you can bring that about, and that's sort of what I've been working on for the past ten years ago. Uh, ten years or so, and it's an absolutely beautiful and wonderful place to be when you take those principles that fuel and fund the libertarian ethic and apply it to within your own li life, and you create a state and society of your circle, and that is a beautiful thing. It's completely under your control. You don't have to run around giving money to political candidates and hammering in lawn signs and doing all that nonsense, but you can bring the basic principles of a voluntary society completely to bear in your own life, tomorrow, today, tonight. And that's the approach that I've taken, and, uh, uh, and that's sort of what I advocate at freedomainradio.com. And that uh, has worked uh, beautifully for me. It's worked very well for other people and so on. Does that sort of answer your question about the ways that I... And I think through that process, we'll show how voluntarism works really well. And that way, we will spread it much more effectively than using merely intellectual arguments. Does that sort of answer your question? Oh, yeah, sure. I think it's a fabulous answer. Thanks so much. Thanks. The uh, check's in the mail. I think I did get your address, so I appreciate the question. <laughs> All right. We'll appreciate the call. 